If you know anything about everything but haven't played it, then you probably have a number of assumptions about it. Maybe you think it's like Katamari Damacy or a Nobi Nobi Boy. The game's art style does beg comparison to Katamari Damacy. Maybe you think it's too niche or too preachy. It isn't for the AAA crowd, necessarily, but I wouldn't call it preachy. Or maybe, like me, you thought it was a toy, a game you could play for an hour or two and just go about your day afterwards. Yeah, you could call it that, I suppose, but there is much to be gained from this toy. Because it's a toy in the same way that a Rubik's Cube or a chess set is a toy. And honestly, none of these takes are too far off. But you would be remiss to think that everything isn't worth your time. There is insight and serenity to be had, if you're into that sort of thing. I've named a few assumptions that I've heard about everything, but I've left one out. That assumption being that it's a stripped down version of Spore. It certainly seems like Spore, and it looks like Spore, but let me just say this. For all the things Spore tried to be, everything tried to be less, and succeeded at being more. Spore believed in intelligent design. Starting the game involves developing your first cells, and over time you're given opportunity to create more complex creatures. You can add arms, legs, eyes, fins, gills, any kind of animal accessories for just a few DNA points, which is the evolutionary currency of the game. With time, patience, and commitment, you too can create an Alex Trebek lookalike, or a walking version of the word f and you can make those monsters walk upright and greet each other with a how do you do. You can make intelligent ringworms, willing to rocket through space, or blow each other up, or whatever it is you want to believe that intelligent beings are supposed to do. Spore also believed in Manifest Destiny. At some point your creature will evolve into something willing to take land from another species. When that happens, you are destined to spread. Of course you technically have the option to stay put on your piece of land, but the fun that Maxis built into the game wasn't meant for isolationists. It was meant for conquerors and valiant explorers. Spore believed in the acquisition, usually by force, of resources. At the tribal stage, you are asked to fight for your plot of land, and your absolutely true belief system. At the civilization stage, you're asked to build a city and sustain your community of peers. A city that pulls the resources from the land to build something bigger and better, something financially viable, something progressive, something that could last for a thousand generations. All of these aspects of Spore are succinctly Western ideals. The freedom to create anything you want, any way you want. The right to any plot of land, sea, or sky that you might find. And if you need to pay the iron price for that plot, you had better be strong enough to do so. The right to take what you want without regard for any other living creature. Historically speaking, these are the ideals that have gotten countries in the West the vast amount of powers that they currently have. Spore speaks from the belief that the way that our civilization happened is the only way it could have happened. In video games, this sort of thing isn't uncommon. Civilization and SimCity work with resemblance assumptions. It's not uncommon, but it's also short-sighted. Everything, on the other hand, is indifferent to intelligent design. Customization is not the point in everything. The point is to give the player connection to the creatures and objects they deal with on a daily basis. The energy of the universe exists in all these things, man. All those things that you recognize. The rocks, and the trees, and the trombones, and the ambulances. In this game, you play as those things to learn that maybe they're just as sacred as humans are. Now, just as an aside, I'm pretty sure you can't play humans in this game, and I'm okay with that. It's a welcome adjustment, because humans have had the world long enough. Everything doesn't believe in ownership. Not really. You might say the player owns whatever item they inhabit in the moment, but to make that claim sorely misinterprets the idea of ownership. You borrow the physical manifestation of a piece of pizza, just for a moment, and when you move on, the piece of pizza goes about its day, free from your control. Areas are not owned, and therefore you cannot expect to find things where you've left them. Case in point, I once played in a universe where five bananas had replaced the sun. There is no territory, and no rule of governance as enforced by giant turtles or pine trees. Everything does not believe in force. There aren't fights in this game, only friendly encounters, and encounters where one party is intimidated. Animals, trees, and all the rest, they breathe on their own. They live on their own. They do not get overtaken at any point. They just are. Now maybe at this point you're thinking, everything sounds pretty boring. After all, Spore padded all levels of evolution with gameplay, city building, and fighting, exploration, and fighting, extinction, and growth through fighting. There was a lot of fighting in Spore. I get that Maxis was a bit timid about releasing a game without enough things to do. Creating things to do in a game, after all, is the primary job of any AAA studio worth its salt. But doing so changes the feel of the game. 
Enter Alan Watts. Watts was a philosopher who popularized Eastern philosophy in the West. And he's the person in everything who you're listening to every time you find one of those little target icons. David O'Reilly, the game's developer, has gathered various recordings of Watts and compiled them into something resembling a belief in connectivity. Those recordings, those snippets of philosophy, are what give everything its grounding. Without the words of Watts playing while you traipse around the city or universe, it would be hard to pin down what everything is really about. The mechanics help a lot, but it's Watts' pontificating along with the bizarre soundtrack that might make the player think, hey, maybe they have a point. In everything, there is no dominant species because there's nothing to dominate. Deer and tiger can flock together and dance with the bushes and the fire ants. In everything, there is only scale and distance. We're connected to all things by the energy that is inhabiting all things. And it's by manipulating an item's size and zoom level that you can find out how the upper crust might see things. As long as your mind is open and focused, you can have all sorts of brilliant insight while playing everything. It might be that Spore started as a contemplative, deep, ain't it so trippy dude kind of experience. But you lose that when you have to worry about how you'll keep your city funded or how you'll destroy the tribes nearest to you. You lose the forest for the trees because you have to worry about the seven to 10 different strategies you need to cut those trees down. But everything is the same game all the way up and all the way down. In every stage of being, you can dance, you can sing, you can spawn, and you can get bigger and smaller. That's what you do in everything. And you don't do these things because you have a predetermined goal in mind. You should do whatever feels right for you. Go and play and figure out what it all means in your own time. Spore feels, by its very design, like something that has to be played. Spore is a game that expects the player to win. The player must work towards an end, towards a goal, towards a victory of some kind. Everything doesn't worry about that, because its purpose is to help you find, dare I say it, peace and connection. Its game loop supports realization, maybe even enlightenment. And at the end of my time with Spore, I wondered what I was supposed to get from all of that. Everything, on the other hand, is an experience. Everything is about everything because it's about helping you realize you are a part of everything, that you are a part of a larger whole. I don't like that ending. It'll work though. I have no more throat.